everybody, and welcome back to the Forge Hub YouTube channel. Today we have another episode of Creator Spotlight for you, and today we actually have someone you might know. His uh, name or gamer tag or Twitter alias is Infinite Forges. Uh, say hi, man. What's up, man? Thanks for having me on. This Great. is cool. Glad we're doing this. It's great to have you here, man. Uh, we're just going to be picking your brain a little bit today, get your uh, thoughts, your opinions uh, on a lot of different things, including maybe what you would recommend for new forges coming into the scene. So without further ado, I guess let's jump right on into this. Um, cool. Sounds good. So the first question I'm going to have for you is how long have you been in the Halo community, whether it's been just uh, playing the games or as a forger? Oh, dude, what, 20 years? Like, <laughs> I've, been, I've been here since since halo ce but i've been forging since halo 3 when that first came out i remember first hearing about forge and i was just like dude this is nuts and it, and it got me into this whole idea of i can make my own maps like I, I didn't even know that was a thing i thought that was specific to just the developers right um i didn't really understand it at first but you know we got into it did some goofy game types and then you know, you had Reach, and then you had Four, and then you had Five. And Five is when I actually, for the first time ever, took my work public and shared it. Because um, I've been forging ever since Three, but I just never put out any work until Five. Uh, and and that was that was a really cool time because putting the work out, it was during a unique time as well, where not a lot of people were putting out Forge content at all, <laughs> right? Like, if at all. Yeah. I think I was the only forger for like, 12 months sharing anything <laughs> so it was, it was like it was it was um it was definitely cool and i was able to get my name out there which was which was wonderful um and i'm glad people are enjoying it but yeah i've been been around for about that long and publicly it's only been what like a year and a half two years or something like that yeah, I, I think uh, about a year and a half, two years ago is when I first started hearing about you. Um, but I know what time you're talking about. Literally, like, the first year of Halo 5, it was just kind of, like, dead silent when it came to a bunch of Forge stuff. Like, yeah, people were f posting uh, on Forge Hub and posting their maps around, but it wasn't, like, a lot. Like, how Halo 5's heyday of the last two years, three years has, uh, has been. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, it's great to hear that you've been around since all the way back in the CE days. That's uh, crazy. Not many people are like you and me to where we've been able to do that. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's hey. been it's. I feel honored. I feel honored because it's it's been cool to see things grow. You know the way that they have, and specifically Forge, man. I mean, like, oh my God. You know what's next for it is what gets me really, really excited. So. Hopefully what's next will be Infinite's Forge in the next year, but we can never count our chickens before they hatch, I guess. Um, but I guess we can ask that. What would uh, be some hopes and dreams for you for Infinite's Forge? What would be some things that you'd love to see? Oh, man, the things that I want to see. I want to see... Because uh, I spend a lot of time in Unreal Engine. Um, yeah. So the things that I would want to see are things related to what I work with already. Um, first things first which I think would change the game for Forge is having a landscape editor, right? If at all that's possible, having something like that, whether that's at launch or down the line. Uh, another thing would be uh, scalable objects, uh, AI, and, um, you know, like having a very a, a more in-depth uh, scripting system you know yeah these are these are the things that i that i that i want to see as well as things that allow people to create stronger more immersive atmospheres right maybe different dynamic weathers or or whatnot that you could add to a level that could be really cool um one thing that you can do in unreal is you could change the position of the sun you know so you could change the time of day and whatnot that way i'd love to see that as well and there's just a variety of things and having all of that, I think, gives the player base a lot of unique ways to create something new every single time. And a lot more than what even Halo 5 did, which Halo 5 was great. But the other thing that I want to see is the increased budget. I want to be able to make a layout, but then also be able to art it to my heart's content. <laughs> you 
<laughs> and make it something truly, truly immersive. I definitely think that's one thing that a lot of people want is the increased budget solely because like even in Halo 5 when they increased the budget from 10,024 I think it was to yeah. all the way up to 1600 even even that just it, it was it was a lot and it helped us do more but mm -hmm. it didn't allow us to push the boundaries so I 100% I agree with you on there when you're talking the about like terrain editing and all that or do you mean like more like we have the prefabbed pieces and we can sculpt through them or like similar to how Far Cry is to where like you can like I'm thinking bring up the ground. I'm, I'm thinking like Far Cry, you know, I think that would be pretty incredible if you think about it. Definitely. Uh, like imagine, imagine Duquesne 23, how many race maps he can make, you know, with just terraforming the landscape. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know du what I mean? Duquesne's going to make the wormhole tunnels from Star Wars, man. That's going to be his first map. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, but I, the the other thing that I was gonna say is I would love to see a uh, you know in Halo Five we've had a bunch of different pre, like, what what were they right? You had like Tidal, you had Alpine, you, no 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 oh, no no, you uh, had like you had the certain levels that you could build on. Yeah, the four canvases. The the canvases, yeah. What I want to see is I want to see a blank canvas. I want to see a canvas where there's nothing. Just right? completely and white, it, like just a just, complete white just screen. Complete, completely uh just empty like a grid or something yeah. or like a black box or just like so you just start building in it right um that's how it is in unreal you know it's like it's just empty and then from there you just build that's the type of stuff that i want to see uh lastly well actually i think that's that's about it we'll, we'll leave the rest to be surprised <laughs> right i mean <laughs> there, we'll see there, what there happens hopefully be a lot of surprises with that uh, speaking of surprises, uh, you recently got into the games industry from what I've seen on Twitter. Um, yeah. Would you have any recommendations for any uh, people within the Forge community that would want to get into the game industry or any advice? And do the same? Yeah. I mean, the, the thing that I would say is put yourself out there as much as you can and consistently do so. Um, I started out with Forge like publicly only like we're talking about a year and a half ago or so two years ago something like that um and it was just me consistently putting stuff out there trying to network with people um getting some mentors right caleb nekmanesh which was the guy that that has been a huge help for me in unreal engine um he used to work at 343 you know and he <clears throat> he's one of the most kindest helpful people so if you guys ever want someone to to help you with game software and whatnot you should definitely hit him up because he's a very talented and knowledgeable guy he was a big help to me and i, I think what i would attribute getting into the industry what i would attribute all of it to is a having your portfolio right make right. sure you're comfortable with putting yourself out there and do it consistently build an audience online right so if you create maps and whatnot even if no one's playing them it doesn't matter uh just make sure that you're putting content out there based around what you're making the biggest problem i see with forgers is that there's not a like there's so many talented guys in, in girls in this community but not a lot of them put their work out there publicly and i always questioned that i was like why um i understand that there's some people maybe are shy to do it right totally makes sense but if you're aiming to get into the games industry or just to get yourself out there and just in general create nice photos or just video content my thing was trailers because when you put music with panning shots of a of a level um it evokes a lot more emotion and interest into your content and it's a lot more shareable when it's on Twitter. I think that actually is probably one of the biggest pieces of advice that I would give is that if you're going to start sharing content anywhere, do it on Twitter and tag people that are in the Forge community like myself that that will likely share it, right? And and Forge Hub and you know all the people that and then Duquesne 23, right? Like all the in Forge Labs if he still does that, right? Um you know However, I will people. say. However, I will say, for be prepared to now get spammed with uh, ads on Twitter for uh, content. So it I doesn't. It I, does. It does not matter. I 100%. totally love seeing Forge content, and I mean, it's why I named myself what I did. <laughs> so it's like, you know. But it, it's um, Twitter is one of the best ways, though, because if you put content out there, 
this is a great way to get just retweets and whatnot on Twitter, which is essentially just the easiest way to get your content out there. It really is uh, compared to YouTube and whatnot. The, yeah. ver- the the potential to go viral on Twitter is, is far greater than on YouTube. So reeling it back in a little bit more towards the Forge stuff, I guess, just to bring it more in towards the newer folk who were here. Would you have any recommendations for uh, people to check out for inspiration, or where would you get your inspiration from for some of your Forge creations and maps? Dude, a lot of it surprisingly was just off of the. It was all from the Halo universe, right? A lot of it was. Um, some was from the Doom universe, uh, but all in all, where I get a lot of really cool ideas is I source them from ArtStation. I go on there and I type in, because I'm an environment guy, I love building immersive scenes. So I go to ArtStation, I for instance type in, like if I want to make a desert biome, I type in desert concept art or like desert sci-fi concept art or something along those lines. And I usually look at concept art compared to final builds of levels and whatnot because they they seem to be a lot more grandiose and kind of out there. You know, concept art that is right. <laughs> uh, yeah, concept art, right? Yeah, and and I look at that and I basically say, all right, cool. Let's 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 see what elements I could take from this. Sometimes I've literally looked at five or ten different pieces of concept art and I say, I like that sky, I like that ground, I like those rocks, I like those trees. It's it's all things to look into and to understand. But when I look at content, I look at it in that way and I say, okay, what's one thing I can take from all and then put it into um, a really unique scene. Halo has been such a source of inspiration because it has something that feels so familiar, but is very alien, you know? Yeah. It's ba- I mean, it's like Pacific Northwest on a, on a floating ring in the middle of space, like... <laughs> like that's what I mean. That's why I love I, I love it because you can build something that you're familiar with, but at the same time you can be so crazy with it. But to answer your question, concept art. That's what I look at primarily when it comes to sourcing inspiration. Hold on one second. I'm actually getting a uh, call here from one of the other team members here on Forge Hub, and uh, he's going to be talking to us as well and ask some questions as well, kind of help a little more of the conversation. Uh, so without further ado, let me introduce Foge. Howdy, howdy. It is Foge. It is Foge. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Well, to get right back into our, co- our conversation we were having, uh, so what would be some other uh, advice that you would have for people that are just getting into the Forge community? Well, like, like I was stating about <clears throat> how to get yourself out there and <clears throat> like the consistency and, and whatnot, just find what it is that you, that you flow most with, right? What you, what you're genuinely good at. You do that through experimenting, whether it be the actual layout, whether it be, uh, weapon placements, whether it be overall, just like the gameplay design or environments like myself, you know, um, just find that thing and then double down and become the best that you can be at that uh and try to collaborate with other forgers too which is the best thing is just help people right and uh see if they're willing to help you too and just go back and forth and if someone has a layout maybe if like i'm only going to use an example from my point of view it's like someone gives you a a white box you know layout you essentially just take that you art it up right and use that as as a co-forge right do a bunch of collaborations especially when infinite's forge comes out um there's gonna be so many opportunities for that so i think new forgers have a really good opportunity later this year right right uh especially with how long we're gonna have to wait they'll be able to to like come up with some little level designs in their head with uh yeah, whether it be pen and paper or just going back to halo 5 or any of the past forges yeah um, man use 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 five for layouts i mean that's an awesome idea i think squally's been doing that i believe so too uh foge how about you what would you uh give as advice to any new forgers that are coming out uh definitely just try and do something crazy um which i think uh infinite uh forges himself has been doing absolutely outstandingly well at 
Um, I'm gonna which try. Is, which <laughs> which kind of leads into my next question, which is, what do you think is more important? Uh, the actual layout of the map or the art? I think the... Oh, that's such an interesting one, because depending on who you talk oh, to, it's going to be so different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, the, for me, I'm biased. Um, biased, I think. Well, actually, maybe not. No, it's because the thing is, if you don't have a strong layout, right, and gameplay design, it doesn't matter how pretty it looks. If it sucks to play on, you know, that's going to distract you from all the environmental stuff anyway, you know? So I think the core of it is what's important. The environment not saying it comes second but you have to nail the flow first in my opinion the art kind of fleshes out what's there already the art the art basically compounds upon what is there and makes it memorable like the layout is one thing right but if you just had like a white box layout you, you wouldn't remember it right the environment is something that makes that's that's what all the um locations are right it's like oh he's in alleyway this or he's in or he's by the trash can or he's by the you know whatever right like like unfortunately you, you cannot put a block out into hcs and call it a day yeah <laughs> but the, the thing is you have to have environmental set pieces in order for it to come to life and for it to have its own identity so i think that's what comes like I said, not that it comes second, but I, I do believe it does, right? And in some cases, just because you need to nail that initial gunplay for or, or, or game design first. Definitely. Nice. Well, I guess based off that, uh, another question that we could ask you is, what is something that you've been the most proud of working on? Like, what's your most proud map? I would say one of the coolest that I did, just because of the community and how hyped they were, was Hydro, right? Yeah. But... Apart from that, the, the ones that I really enjoyed were like the Doom level that I did because the aesthetics on that were really cool. You know, like a massive elite robot shooting a laser. Yeah, right like a you. cyber like, demon style elite. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was it was crazy. Like, there's just those are those are three that come to mind for me. Um, but as for the number one, just because of how much I learned and how much work went into it would be the Zeta Halo experience. Nice. Would you, uh, how long did the uh, Zeta Halo experience actually take you to like come up with and like make and all that? Was it just something that like you put together in like a month or did it take longer? I put it together in about a, like, like a month and a half or something like that. Um, I think it was around a month because the, the other three months were basically, hey, what should we do with this? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like we were kind of just thinking about it. And then when it came to actually um doing it right and actually building it that's how long it took yeah about a month or so i feel like that's a uh, common uh thing that uh, happens around uh level designers and environment artists that just kind of do stuff for fun they always just say well what do i do with this what does everyone think about it <laughs> yeah that's what it you is I, I was just throwing <laughs> so many ideas out to like specific people i was like hey what do you think of having because the zeta halo experience was essentially you're supposed to walk out of a of a destroyed pelican and then someone's like the pelican sucks and i was like yeah you're right and then we got rid of it you know it's like <laughs> it was all this stuff but the actual building process of it like the final thing that you see it's like a month so it was it was definitely it was definitely interesting it was like building a game without actually building a game so in that case it sounds like there's a lot of feedback uh, that went into both the Zeta Halo experience project and some of your Hydro stuff with the uh, pre-makes and uh, <laughs> even the Doom stuff, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't get me started on Hydro with feedback that I got. <laughs> well, well, I mean, a, hey, that was, that's a funny one. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a really funny one. Um, God, man, I was so... Hydro, it's because Hydro... I, that was for anyone that doesn't know that was the recharge remake or pre-make that i did oh, well, actually we can tell that now can we say that now yeah because uh because now it's all public that uh i knew what that map looked yeah, like okay before. okay so here's the thing <laughs> so here's the funny joke okay yeah. basically what happened was as i was building, this is so frustrating to me as i was building this um, I was like, yo, Foge, what do you think of this, man? He goes, oh, looks cool, dude. 
<laughs> like, I wonder what it's going to look like. And this guy has known <laughs> for the past two years what the entire layout was like. And he was basically just saying, yeah, man, looks cool. You should do this. You should do that. But like, I, he, it was never... He never gave any real insights. He was just like, oh, an open area? Super cool. You know, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Especially after he was yeah. named in the credits. I'm sure that was more of a, more of a, hey, you didn't tell me. What the heck? <laughs> no, he told me directly. He says, oh, hey, by the way, <laughs> just to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as, as soon as the game came out, I let, I let, uh, Infinite Forge just now. I was like, yo, you you know I knew that map from the very beginning, right? Yeah. <laughs> and he yeah. goes, no, what? <laughs> exactly. It was that was a that was a funny conversation. I was like, yeah. come on, dude. <laughs> it was really funny. But that was probably one of the coolest ones just because of, of I love doing stuff that either involves myself with the community or involves myself with other forgers. That's the best part about Forge. It's something that you'll never get from Unreal Engine is that when you're working in Unreal, it's not like you could just click the down button or whatever it was in Halo 5 and, and jump in and play, you know? Yeah. Um, it's it's a whole process of exporting and will my game crash, you know? Or like, will I lose progress? Well, I need source <laughs> control for this. Like, it's just, um, it's so much easier. You don't have to really think about all the the details and that's why i'm looking forward to infinite forge because it's uh i think the best times that i've ever had on halo were just like hey guys what are we going to do today right like what are we going to make and, and then you something. just yeah it's it's a really cool feeling Alrighty. well unless anyone would like to say anyone else gentlemen uh please uh we'll be exiting this uh this meeting here this little interview so if you guys would like to say any final words whether it be you foge or you infinite just uh Say, uh, say say your piece pretty much, and uh, we'll be closing out here. I love yeah. blitzers. No, oh, man. thank <laughs> you so much, dude. <laughs> I see. I told you he needed to say it at least once. <laughs> he needed to say it at least once. Oh, I knew this it. Part ain't making it in <clears throat> video, so. Yeah. Hey, you don't know that bacon might put it in and expose you. <laughs> oh, I would love that. <laughs> uh, dude, that would be that would be funny. Please, bacon, if do it. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, no, all I'll say is that uh, if you guys want to follow me, my Twitter is Infinite Forges, my YouTube is Infinite Forges, um, and Discord as well, Infinite Forges. But uh, yeah, man, it was great just talking to you guys. I'm, I'm glad that we could do some type of cross, you know, we, we could connect, you know, it's because um, I've, been, I've been aware of Forge Hub for quite some time. And to do talks with you guys is, is fantastic. So it was, it was really man. cool. It's always a great. It's, yeah. al it's always a pleasure to talk to whether it be new foragers or even the old ones here. Yeah, I'm very old. <laughs> I'm very old. <laughs> You're not an old forger. Let's not take it that far. <laughs> hey, yo, I've been here. I've been. I've been here since Halo Three. All right, you just haven't seen me that long. <laughs> I was around since Halo Three, but you saw me in Halo Five at the very beginning. So uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Anyway. All right. Okay. Oh, no, do you have anything to say before we sign off here? <laughs> uh, no, nah, we're all good. Alrighty. Well, in that case, gentlemen, pleasure having you all on. Uh, for anybody who would like to leave any feedback for these types of videos, or if you'd like to have any questions be answered to the next forger we have on the interview, please leave them in the comment section below. And uh, let's remember to forge a new Halo.